First News with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. County executive who also has an amazing voice, Anthony Pacetti. You should hear him. It rivals Steve Winwood. You should hear him do uh, Valerie by Steve Winwood. <laughs> it's incredible. It really is. Yeah, We'll save it for another day. Yeah, we can save it. We can save it. Is that uh, is that how you're opening the State of the County address, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, uh, let's just chat about um, yesterday's uh, briefing that uh, that went down. And uh, the headline that came out was, it's basically positive news right now. Very good news, well, he said. Well, it is. It's good news. Uh, you know, and we're still, you know, we, we always have to put that side of caution on that because of, the you know cases they're still there. I mean, and we're yeah, still plateauing, yeah. which is, a, is is I don't know if it's as troublesome as it was before, but mm-hmm. but the positivity rate is certainly below one one uh, percent. Uh, you know that's key. The the hospitalizations way down uh, from what they were, and you know the the challenge now is getting more people vaccinated, and uh, quite frankly, getting younger people vaccinated. Yeah, and yeah. because we are seeing some resistance and you know this that certain age group uh you know 25 I, to 40 that we really need to get I know. vaccinated and and you know what uh I, I predicted this was going to end up happening and i and i do think you're going to see new york state schools public schools uh begin to require the vaccine once it is approved for kids under the age of 16 but look at i mean colleges are already doing it um ithaca announced last week Syracuse University in the news today. Others are going to follow. They're going to require the vaccine for kids to go back to school and staff as well. Well, we're doing this weekend uh, at one of our pods. We've got a few of them going on. And one of them, while it's, uh, you know, what you could call a mixed pod because it's open to the public, but we are also uh, vaccinating students from NVCC, SUNY Poly, uh, Hamilton College, Utica College, and uh, so we're you know we're in that we're in that business as as well and uh, and you know more of those students are coming through and that's mm-hmm. good but we still need more and then yeah, yeah and I I've, I've told you know that you know internally in our office and even with uh, you know looking ahead uh, you know the, the real challenge is going to be if we or whoever has to and which it seems like it might fall on us uh, you know with the schools uh, for the students going forward that's going to be a big challenge whether mm-hmm. it's over the summer or you know and prior to September and you know depending on what state ed and state health recommends uh, which you know they dragged their feet last summer hopefully yeah, they yeah. won't do that this year right. and uh, and and make a make a make a decision I mean, you're absolutely right what are we going to do with that so yeah. you know we've been we've been thinking about it and trying to prepare for it but it's uh it's a huge challenge, and it's expensive. As I said yesterday, it was one of the other messages yesterday. And our pods are, you know, everybody's talking about stimulus money and, you know, how it's going to replace what we lost. Well, we're still spending money. Right, right. Um, we're still, you know, and again, you know, for public health, we have to, and we will, and we'll continue. But, you know, we need, uh, you know, we need partnerships, too, in the, in the cities, towns, and villages as we go forward, because these pods are expensive, and... If we get to uh, the bigger numbers, uh, especially whether it's college students or whether it's all students, uh, we're going to yep. really yep. work cut out for us. We already do. So I-, I included this in the report yesterday that you can find on our website. But, Bill, <clears throat> I'm wondering if you – do you have an, an, a number in mind? How much it costs the county to operate one of these pods, just one pod, each pod? Um, is a pod the same size as MV or is it a smaller uh – well, they're all different. I mean, yeah. you know, again, if you just want to take the average pod, take, uh, you know, a Griffiths pod of 500 doses, you know, I mean, so because, yeah. you know, we've, you, I mean, we don't, I mean, those, are, I mean, we've done smaller ones, but we've also yep. done larger ones. They don't, the county I, doesn't pay for a vaccine. Are you asking for per day, we don't per pay week? For the vaccine. Yeah, but, right. but they got to pay for security. It's per pod, per day. So per they got to pay for I security, would, they got to pay for the doctors, and they got to pay for the people who inject it. I would them. guess. All the people, right. I would guess it's it's got to be costing over um, fifteen thousand dollars a day. I don't know fifty fifty thousand dollars. How about a day. that? The county has spent wow. five million dollars. Let me, let me well over fifty. Yeah, and I, you wow. know, I wanna, you know, we're still, you know, and, and you know, so the point is, these are expensive undertakings. And, and look, I'm not trying to put uh, the the issue that you know we're you know trying 
crying about it in that yep. regard. I just want to explain to people because they have to understand that it's it's a it's a matter of what we're dealing with, and it's like when they talk about you know, and, and everyone talks about stimulus money and, and going backwards, you know, and replacing what you spent. Well, I'm still spending money every day, and um, you know, I mean, it, and a lot of money because you know, at a pod, you take a Griffiths pod, yeah, you may have you know a hundred. You know, 100 workers, because there is a, a, a lot that goes into that in terms of security, as, as, as Jeff said, but also, you know, uh, pro, uh, you know, overall, you know, uh, segmenting, uh, you know, the people, uh, the registers, uh, the nurses, the doctors themselves who yeah. are administering, but the, uh, the overall checkpoints, you know, that go through it, the equipment that goes along with it that we have to have on hand. You know, right, in terms right. of these pods that go through right. it. So the expensive, you know, cost per hour, and when we run them, look, we don't just we don't just show up. We got to set up, uh, you know, get everything uh, in, in check so that you know, as people come through, they're vaccinated. They go yep. out the back back end, and then that's the that's the drive-in pod, which is a little bit easier. Take the big pod at JC right. from two weeks ago. Um, Twenty one hundred vaccines, a hundred and. Oh, God, I want to say maybe 150 workers uh, at that point, you, wow, know, the, wow. you know, throughout the day from, from eight, you know, from, and, and people get there at, at six in the morning until, until eight at night mm-hmm. and then some between setup and breakdown and, and all the things in between. And so, you know, the hourly rates, uh, you know, we have a great many of our employees that are, that are doing so that, you know, obviously there's overtime costs for them. There's, there, but there's the, we've hired, I think, a hundred and, 30, 150 plus uh, between, you know, vaccinators and yeah, yeah. and uh, administrative assistants and uh, doctors, to, you know, and and nurses, et cetera. So, you know, it, it, it a lot goes into these pods, and, and that's something that people, you know, need to understand. And uh, so we want to do more in the towns and villages, and, yeah. and we will. I have to say, if you would uh, use radio, uh, on a radio salary, uh, employees would be expected to do it as part of their normal salary, and there'd be a pizza party afterwards. Yeah. I mean, the money that could be saved if well, you use radio you know, people would be. Well, there. But we're doing, you know, we're doing two. Small and we'll pods blog about today. it. Um, we're doing a couple pods today. One in one in Forestport, one in Clayville. So those are, you know, those are the startup, you know, smaller ones. Which, yep. you know, we're getting good. We're getting excellent response. So next week we're going to look at, and the next week we'll look at Vernon, Camden. And then we'll spread out. So, um, and you are doing we, another we one. Need, we, need, we need people to, to get the vaccine. And are the current uh, of adults that are eligible, you said the percentage right now is? We're at about 40%. That's really, really good. Doses, I you know, still I think mean, that's you know, good. Yep. It's, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm very – look, and, and I need to, to, to tip a hat to uh, really, and even more so, to the people that have been working these pods. Our, our, mm-hmm. our staff has been phenomenal, and the people that we've had – that uh, have uh, been hired, uh, you know, even, you know, some of them didn't want to get hired, I have to tell you that. I mean, they were like, no, we'll volunteer. And we're like, no, we, you know, and there's, there's there's hard work here and yep. the dedication, but they want to be there. They want to help people. And, they, and they're really, you know, you go to these pods, and I know you've been to them. I mean, mm-hmm. nobody's, nobody's like, you know, a matter of fact, they're they're really engaged and, and yep. helping Nobody people was and, miserable. and really excited yeah. about yeah. being there. Yeah. Any truth to the fact you'll be providing live entertainment at the uh, Griffiths Rome Pod? Uh, Paseni sings the hits. <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was going to try and get see if Senator Griffo wanted to get oh, to the, the he does like that. Band back together. Yeah, he does enjoy that. Uh, and come up there, you know, do Woodstock at Griffiths. Mm-hmm. You know, Woodstock, I like too, that. You know, Woodstock. Yep. Uh, you know, so. Well, listen. The the reality is, um, this has all been put together very quickly, and you know, we, we there, there should be a little padding on the back right now. Because uh, what your office has done, what the community has done, and what we've all done, gather and just and right down to people being open to getting the uh, the vaccine. Um, this place is just all in a much better place. I mean, we're talking about going to a Comets game tonight. Um, it does. And, and, and look, that's where I would encourage. And again, you you, you guys really do have and, and do a great job in terms of talking about this because of your experiences and everything else. And that's what I said yesterday. You know, if you if you've had COVID. Yeah, uh, you know, tell people go get the vaccine. If you've had the vaccine, tell people to go get the vaccine. Yeah. Whether it's yeah. your, fa- you know, your family members, friends, whatever. I mean, it's the only thing that's going to get us through and get us back to you know the the normalcy yeah. that we're that we're all begging for. So, 
Speaking of, we were talking about money and how much it costs to run these pods. Sure. How concerned are you about in the state budget that there's a mobile gaming deal, it seems, and we don't really quite understand if the payments you receive from the United Indian Nation are in jeopardy right now? Well, I think the whole thing is, is pretty confusing, I know, for everybody to understand, even though we don't you know, directly receive money from mobile gaming or even from uh, sports betting, you know, that, that was allowed. You know, the, the more disturbing part is that all of these casinos, but more importantly, my concern obviously is, you know, with the Oneidas and what, what they provide us and what we've been doing with them. And the fact that they, you know, I mean, here's, you know, and, and I, I heard Joel on the other day, I know Joel Barkin from the yeah, Nation yeah. was on. I mean, and, and he made the great point. It's like they've, you know, they paid, basically entered into a settlement agreement mm-hmm. and paid for exclusivity to do gaming, all gaming. It doesn't say you can only do, you know, three right. types of yep. gaming. It says all gaming. under and, and plus it's under federal law that they also have that ability. Yet the state, you know, at a time which is really surprising, has is, is excluded the Native Americans from this from this piece altogether. And But then is only looking to do one license for mobile gaming, basically, in which the state controls it, which it's, it's crazy. And so... Yeah. The, the, the jeopardy that it puts us in is, is and, and look, we've had a great relationship with the Oneidas. We do believe, and I, I agree with them, that this is a breach of their agreement because they were given this, this uh, you know, exclusivity yeah. for these 10 counties. So now you took it away from them, and, you know, we'll see where they go. I hope it doesn't go to litigation, but at the end of the day, everybody has to protect their interests. Yeah. And yeah. where the jeopardy is, is, is the, you know, the basis of, you know, the Turning Stone trademark and, and what they can do and what, what it can lead to to more growth. And that's what I'm most concerned about. Well, I was very impressed with uh, Joel. What he, what he said basically is they'll, uh, they'll, they'll overlook the whole um, exclusivity thing if they're allowed to compete statewide for the, the mobile gambling. And, and they, they offered the, uh, yep. a, an unbelievable compromise that yep. said, look, we'll put a server somewhere else. Let us, we'll waive the exclusivity on mobile yep. gaming. And everybody gets in. Yeah, I mean, and, basically, and, everybody, that, that, yeah. and the other casinos and the other tribes agreed to that. Yes. So now, I mean, but, but it should be did, easy. And, and then there we are again. Yeah. No. Uh, just a, a follow up to that. If they've kind of, I don't want to say, I, I say threatened. They've kind of said, "Look, we've got an agreement in place. You're violating the agreement." And they've talked about, you know. That they pay seventy million dollars to the state, right? But eight right. about what about eighteen million dollars of that comes to you, right? To the Oneida County, about, really about twenty in a good eight, year, twenty, 20 million like dollars, yeah. and that I mean, that's a huge hole in you know, your budget, yeah. right? Yeah. That, that would be yeah, that, that is well. We saw what it did just when they were closed yeah. for three months during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. It was a huge hit to us. Uh, yeah. So you know, and there there are provisions that you know require them to continue as even as they. You know, uh, file it, whether it's we we file arbitration against the state or whatever. But but nonetheless, it's still about you know you're, you're not even honoring you know, and that's what you know the, the state legislature and I know Joe fought for it and and and, and others, but it, you know, couldn't get through the the heads. Of, you've got an agreement in place here yeah. that was settled in the court of law that mm-hmm. says you can't do this. Yet they go ahead and do it. And it's, how it's meaningless pretty, is pretty it? Remarkable. Yeah, there's a pending really agreement is. with the state if they they're showing to make a new agreement they're willing to violate a previous one, right? Well, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's pretty crazy. Uh, I know you got to go, County Executive. Thanks for the time. Um, Thank you. We appreciate it. Enjoy this uh, yeah, near near eighty week. tomorrow. Yeah. So how about that? All right. Thanks yeah. so much. Enjoy the Take weekend. Care. Yep. Have a good one. Stay County, safe. County Executive Anthony Pacenti.